Hi there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at the image size dialog box, which is right here, and also the canvas size dialog box in Photoshop and see how that works in a real life situation. So I'm going to go back and find an image going to google.com and I'm going to look for kittens and then click on the blue search. Under search tools, we can Oh, I want to go to images first, I'm sorry. Then under search tools, you'll see that a number of different tools pop down. For example, one of the first things that I want you to do is choose something that you can actually use in projects. So one of the Creative Commons choices would be great. And pretty much all the bottom four are close to the same thing, at least for this. And also, I want to choose a size which is a little bit larger. So I'm going to choose the 2 megapixels and up. That's 1600 by 1200 pixels. Now a number of different images come up and you'll notice as you hover over them they actually show you where they're coming from which is really kinda nice. Now here's one from Flickr which is a nice image and then I can also navigate to the next image when this one is on Wikimedia I can see right here and there is something that's a little bit different about using them. Um, when you go to Flickr and you click on this it will actually take you to the Flickr page and because this is a Creative Commons image, right now it says attribution and share alike, basically. Um, since uh, it is an open source image, you can actually download it without even logging in, which is really great. So you can click on download this image and you can download the original image as you need. Now I'm going to put this in a folder. Um, my main folder I've called image sizes and I have a subfolder called originals. This way I know that these are original images. Now another thing about f saving this file is I'm going to call it Flickr so that I know where it's come from. Although this kind of crazy code that we have in here actually indicates to me that it's from Flickr. It might be nice to know what the name of this is, which is Red Kitten 01. It says right there. That's actually the name of this particular file. But it's kind of hard to find um, in, uh, in Flickr later on until you actually know what it is. Let's see what happens if we did Red Kitten 01. And I'm not sure that it will come up. So, yeah, you'll see that we're going to come up with a lot of images. So, it's I've always found it difficult to find an image over again in Flickr unless you have that link. Anyway, I'm going to go back a little bit um, until I get back to the images here. And this one right here is on Wikipedia. If I were to, or Wikimedia, if I was to view that image, it would actually load up that image in a, a new page. So this is a little bit different. Instead of having some sort of button to download it, in order to use this one, I would have to right click and choose um, Save Image As, and now I can save that one out. It has a little bit nicer name right here instead of a whole bunch of different code, but I do want to know that this is from Wikimedia. So I'll put that name at the beginning just so I know where it's come from. Now I've got two images and I'm ready to start loading them into Photoshop. I can go to the folder by navigating to my desktop to where those images are and that's a really easy way to load them into Photoshop by possibly right clicking on one of them and choosing open with and possibly Photoshop is in your list of applications. If it's not then you have to find another way to do it. For example, if we have Photoshop open, we can just click and drag that image straight into Photoshop, and that works really, really well. Alternately, we can do File, Open, and we can navigate to the file that we want to open. Now, I've got two different images that are open here, so I kind of have to decide, well, which one do I want to move forward with? And I kind of like this image a little bit better. So I'm going to just go ahead and close that one and go on with my tasks using this image by itself. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is find out what the resolution and the size of this image is. If I go to image, image size, it'll tell me right now that this image is 10.5 inches roughly by 7 inches at 300 pixels per inch. Now the 300 dots per inch or pixels per inch is you've got to remember any time that you look at this you're talking about width times height or sorry width times resolution and height times resolution to be able to really 
find out what's going on. It shows you right up here what the pixel dimensions are. And the pixel dimensions for us as graphic designers are often much more important than anything else. In fact, you can switch this to pixels if you want to be able to see what that is distinctly. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because I know that I want to limit my width to just 1500 pixels, and I can do that right here. Now, if I had turned off resample, then you'll see all of a sudden everything is actually combined to each other. And the reason why is because this says that it won't change the pixel dimensions, although I may change it to 300 or even 600 pixels per inch or 150 pixels per inch. And what's happening here is that it's keeping the pixel dimensions the same, but it's just changing that relationship of width times resolution and height times resolution. So resampling is the ability to change the number of pixels or the pixel dimensions of your image, which is often what you want to be able to do. And we as graphic designers are often going to want to go to pixels as our default um, way of looking at these images. So anyway, I want it at 1500 pixels and 300, oh, so it looks like I have to do the resolution first and then change it to 1500. There we go. Um, so that's exactly what I want. 1500 pixels by 1004. Um, we're going to change that number afterwards. And uh, 300. So let's hit OK. And you'll see that it's scaled that image. Now what I want to do is save out an image as 300 dots per inch. So I'm going to do File, Save As, and I want to save this image because this is no longer going to be the original image. I'm going to go to the Image Sizes, which is the main folder, and I'm going to choose Save as a Copy so that it doesn't save over what I have right now, or um, it doesn't force me into that new file. I'm also just going to you know, some, uh, make my file name just a little bit more simple. Now right now it's set up as JPEG, which I think is great. That's what I want to save as. So I'm going to hit save. And uh, right now it's also set to quality being 12, which is the highest amount of quality, the lowest compression. Let's just take it down to something like 10, just so it reduces the file size a little bit. It will change the quality a little bit as well, but for this it won't really matter. Now I'll hit OK. The next one that I want to do is to make this file even a little bit smaller, and we're going to reduce the resolution to only 50, 150 dpi. So we go back up to image, we'll do image size again, and we're going to change this to 150 dpi, and now it's reduced my width to only 750 pixels. Now we'll click OK, and we'll save this one out, and this is going to be as a copy and it's going to be back in the main folder. And I forgot to put the 300 dpi on there. And this is supposed to be white kitten. And that should be underscore 150 dpi. And then save that. Now I'm going to go back to image size again. And we're going to change this to 72 dpi. And you'll notice that it changed my width, and I really want to get that back up to 500. So something just to know is that anytime you change the resolution when you're in this mode, it will change your width um, and height in pixels, and then you have to change those numbers afterwards. So I want it to be um, 500 pixels wide by 72 resolution. Save that. And now I'm going to save this as a copy. Same process again. And this is going to be underscore 72 dpi. Or actually, I think I have this one at 500 width. Here's the reason why. When I have, um, when I'm working with stuff that I plan to go on the screen, I'm usually more interested in what exactly its pixel dimensions are. So when I put um, my numbers on there, I might actually add like what the actual width is of, of an image that I know is going to be placed on a website. So I tend to actually put W or even um, pix so that I know that that's going to be p 
pixels, not um, DPI. So anyway, I'm going to do 500 as my width and save out that file. And in the next one, I'm going to go look at that image size one more time. And this time, keeping the resolution the same, I'm going to change the height to just 100 pixels. And now hit OK. So it's made this file even smaller. Now you'll notice that we're actually looking at this file at only one third the size. So its actual true dimensions is a little bit larger. And the way that I made that a little bit larger is Control plus, a real simple way of making uh, my image um, or zooming in and out. But you can see that's what it looks like at 100% size, which is very different than the original. Now what I'm going to do is save this. And it's going to be the same thing. Save as a copy. Go back to the main folder. White kitten. And that will be 100x. Or I think I did 100 high so that I know that that was what I was trying to do. Just make it 10. Excellent. Now, because I've changed the original image so much, I'm actually going to revert back to the original. So under File, Revert, I'm able to get back to the original file if I want to make new changes. Now, since I'm at 100%, that's why this is really quite large. So I'm going to use Control Plus to kind of get it just down to a little bit smaller. We're at 33% again. And I'm going to do the next thing. Next thing I'm going to do is crop it to a square. So if we look at it, it's definitely shorter than it is wide. So I know that when I want to do my crop, it's going to be using the top number first or the height number first to crop to. So I'm going to do image and I'm going to do image size. And I know that I want to be concerned with what the top number is. And I want that to be 300. Actually, I want it to be 72 DPI first. Then I'm going to have 300 as my height. You'll notice that my width is longer than 300. So I'll hit OK. Now I'll zoom up just a little bit just so I get it back to a, a decent view. And in the image size dialog box, I think now what I'd like to do is make it 300 pixels wide. So if I turn this off, I can change that to 300 and that's what I get. But wait a second, is this really what I want? If I click OK, it's stretching my image. That is not what I want. So I'm going to undo that with Control Z, which we can do Edit, Undo, uh, Undo Image Size. And I'm going to go over to the Canvas Size instead. And what Canvas Size does is it allows me to change the size and the shape of the canvas without distorting the pixels, like stretching the pixels in any sort of way. So if I do 300 here as the width, then I know that it will crop this image by cutting off the left and the right hand sides, um, which is great. Since this cat is pretty much in the middle, that's great. If my cat was over on the left or over on the right, then I might want to choose where it keeps the consistent part of this image. For example, I don't want it to change where the feet are, so I'll go ahead and anchor it to the bottom center and click OK. And it is going to make it smaller. And here's what we get. So that's how you can use the, um, what is it, the canvas size to crop an image. Now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and save a copy of this. And that's going to be the white kitten. And that's 300 by 300, so that I know exactly what that size is. And I believe that's all that I have for the tasks for us to create. Hopefully that gives you just a little bit of insight into the image size dialog box and the canvas size dialog box. One other point about this is that if you make something larger than the canvas size, and what you'll do is you will actually be able to extend your canvas and you can either use a foreground, background color, white, gray, whatever you want as your background, and you're actually just going to extend that so that um, you have a larger image to work with, but it doesn't change the size of the image that you had in there originally. So just something to point out. Um, let me know if you have any questions and go on to the next thing.